Okay, this is an IronCAD tech tip. So I wanted to talk about this sketch. So this sketch is <clears throat> really kind of made up of uh, three circles, and then you have some tangent arcs and horizontal line, and trimming those out to get this shape and some of these dimensions here. But what I'm gonna talk about is a couple different ways of building this and some of the things that you will find uh, find out if you try to build it uh, different ways. So um, one way is to actually have constraints being added automatically. Uh, another way is to create it without the script, uh, constraints, but you have to understand how to add the constraints after the fact and what the limitations are of that. So let me go ahead and talk about that. So there's benefits of both. Uh, let's go ahead and just start with making sure we don't have any constraints on. So we'll go to our constraints. And I turned off all these constraints and even the dimensional constraints here uh, in our uh, sketch property. So, uh, to start this off, uh, it's going to be with uh, some uh, circles here that we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start off with a 33 uh, for that one. I'm just going to draw all three, uh, three of these things, 33 and one that's out here that's 20 inside of this. So now that you have this, you still need to do constraints uh, anyways to get these things to line up properly because you won't have, uh, you know, you can drag things to you know, line these like this. But once you start trying to do these, these lines, like horizontal here, uh, you'll have issues trying to get that those aligned because there's no real way to align except for centers and uh, you know points like that. You have no real way to align this to this without this changing. So you have to use constraints. So we can go ahead and oh, oops, go back to our sketch. Sorry, <clears throat> we can go ahead and add smart dimensions to these just to lock these down. So we'll put a dimension for each one of these on here so we lock down our size so they don't change. So that's one thing. So when we move these around or build these other constraints, we don't want these sizes to change. So that's the first thing we'll do. Next, we can go ahead and add our arcs to this. So we'll go ahead and add an arc <clears throat> out here to these points. And we'll just draw it some something to uh, get it to look somewhat like it's supposed to inside of here. And, and we'll draw our line here at the end here. We'll just do a tendency line and we'll draw, draw that down to here. Okay, so we kind of got these these built inside of here. Now we have to go back and add some of these constraints. So we do need to have these tangencies here. So we'll go ahead and lock that. And we also have some constraint uh, limitations on the heights of these things. So, um, you know, these things need to be tangent as well inside of here. So we want to lock those down and we want to make sure everything moves correctly. So we'll start with the tangencies. We'll just go ahead and, and mark these tangencies, he tangencies here between these guys. And you'll notice right there, this is one of the things uh, that you have to notice. Uh, in this case, notice there's a gap there. Uh, they didn't actually automatically extend that. So this is one of the things you uh, kind of face if you start adding constraints after the fact. You might not get them uh, extending and they might extend past the geometry depending on how you added those constraints. So that's something you need to be aware of. So we'll go ahead and add those constraints there. So now we've got uh, all those constraints added. We can add some uh, dimensional constraints. We know that this uh, from here to here, in the center of this is supposed to be one 40 so we can have those move down inside of there and these move down because of these tangencies inside of here we also want these to be horizontal in our spacing there so those are horizontal on that and we have to have one more dimension here between these two as well so we'll have that dimension there that's going to set that uh, value uh, to 71 and that again you can see these extending past depending on how they were added um, and last, we can add some dimensions to these uh, arcs as well. So these have a, a certain value of 22 for that one. And this one has a value of uh, 42. So that uh, gives us our shape uh, dimensions there. So we can see these values uh, created here. And now we can go to do some of the trimming. So again, this is where you have to see how things are happening. So this arc can be trimmed because these two are meeting, but notice it's extending past it. This one can trim okay. This one can trim to the two curves there as well. So it has some sort of intersection that it can trim. Sometimes it can be short and you'll notice that this whole circle will be highlighted. So that means that the extension is back here, uh, even though it's tangency, it's not extending to it. So anyways, we can trim these away and uh, get all of our curves like we want. This one, this one again, we'll have to kind of zoom in here to trim that. And you can see this is what, I'm, you know, another extension here of our line uh, has to be trimmed off there as well. So then we come down to our bottom one and that one's trimmed as well. And you can kind of see there's actually a little overhang here. So in this case, it's actually a little long as this as well. So this is something you have to find out uh, if you go around that process and uh, trim these uh, after the fact um, and those tangencies, you just have to be aware of that. So yes, it can be done this way. Uh, it's not too much different building automatically, but uh, just wanted to show you some of the differences here. So that's how you can build it after uh, adding the constraints after you build the profile. 
Okay, so now let's go ahead and show how to build this another way using the constraints. So I just kind of want to show you some of the differences to have like automatic constraints being built and what the difference behaviors are. So we'll go into the constraint by right clicking. And we're going to add a few constraints here. So we want to do uh, some smart constraints here. One, we want to go ahead and add the radius when we create the circles. Um, it just saves us some time. And we can add the tangency and the coincidence. So the key thing about these two is if you have tan tangency only, it'll do the same as what we did before. When we do the tangency, it can create a gap that's either short or long, and you have to tr trim or extend those curves. However, if you use a coincident in conjunction with this, it has to extend it to the curve. So it'll, because it has to maintain the connection to the curve and be tangent, so it'll actually automatically extend for you. So it's nice to have both of those on by default. So let's go ahead and create this. So we'll start off with our circle. And again, you can place it in space or you can place it on this line. Um, the reason I'm going to place it on the line is to show you it actually gives me a reference point or a location point or adjustment. So now it actually builds that co uh, coincident here. And uh, just to get out of this to show you, it's coincident. So I can't move it up and down, but I can still move it left and right. So it's still free to move one direction, but it's locked in one, the other other direction. So uh, that's kind of handy. Just give me a, a base reference location. So uh, basically where everything else is going to move uh, to if we make changes. So anyways, we'll go ahead and right click on this one, make this one 33 as well. And we'll go ahead and do the same for this one. Uh, I dragged on that one on accident. So I'll have to just type in here uh, 40 for the diameter. Okay, so now that we have our circles here, uh, we can move these dimensions out of the way if we want to just uh, make it easier for us to see. Uh, we can now do the other things like some dimensions here, for example, we can put a dimension from uh, circle to circle here. In this case, we know this is supposed to be 140. We know these have a dimension between them as well. And that's going with the horizontal dimension there to be 71. These need to be horizontal. So we're going to go ahead and select these two points here to be horizontal. Uh, that will position them there, but they're still free to move uh, along here because uh, we, again, we don't have a way to align these things uh, precisely from the outside. There's no snapping. It's just based on the center points on that inside in, the, in this case. So what we need to do is actually do our line here. So one, we'll go ahead and just use our S key to access our line. And in this case, it doesn't really matter if I'm tangent or not. What I'm doing is basically just going to draw the line from here down to here. In this case, I can see the tangent, so I can actually build that one there. Uh, now, in this case, notice in this case, it didn't actually put a, 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 a uh, coincident on there because I didn't, may not have hit that point exactly on the tangency there. So it actually might be tangent up or down. So another way to do that, just to show you this to make it easier, is if to basically the coincident option, just pick a point and pick a point near it so that you're on the curve. Then when you apply your tangencies to these these uh, curves, you know, you can jump to the other side, but we want to make these tangents inside of here. I mean, we can move these around to get it to jump to the other side, or we just do a tangency like this as well to make it tangent. Now we've got those tangency lines in there and coincident lines, and this is on the center point and it's locking this down again, but we want this to be vertical. We can just pick that line to make it vertical. And now notice that you have the two constraints of both the tangency and coincident. So what that's telling us is these are actually fully extended here. So I'll get to that when we start trimming, you'll see what I mean by that. So next we just need to add our arcs. So again, same as the line, you just pick the point on here, pick another point on here. doesn't really matter if they're tangent. You just want to place those so that they got the coincidence. Same for up here. And you can place that as well. Might as well. So we can see that they're, they're there. They're not tangent yet, but we can set the values if we need to. So we want to set this one to be two, two, two on that one and this one to be uh, 42 as well. So uh, we can see those values are set there or we can move this around so we can see it a little bit better there. There, there we go. So we can see that these have the tangencies, or sorry, the coincidence already, but they don't have the tangency. So we just need to add the tangency into these guys again. But the difference is this will actually automatically extend or move to the, the curve. So again, if we move this one to here, to be tangency. Notice that line has to move or adjust. So it didn't actually leave an extension down here. Like it would have left that line extended all the way down here or the arc all the way extended down here in our other case. This case, it actually has to maintain the tangency and the coincidence. So it's moving these exactly to be the precise locations. We can do the same for up here. When we pick these curves, we can say the tangencies to these two. And again, you'll see where the dot is. When I exit the command, you'll see that dot adjust. So Again, it's making the coincident and tangent on both of those. When I turn the tool off, you'll see that that actually jumps to those those locations. So that actually auto trimmed for us, which is great. Because now when we do the trim command, we can just access it in our S key. You can see that it actually is going to get that arc, that arc, 
in that arc. So we don't have to do any extensions or extra trims. In this case, we only have three to deal with, which we just select those three and we get that same shape as we did before. So just a, a little bit of a different way to approach the creation of this. And uh, wanted to show that to you as a tech tip that you can build it multiple ways in IronCAD, but just there's some differences when you're dealing with constraints, how they behave and how you have to do extra work sometimes with trimming. And sometimes uh, it's easier to do it when you're creating to have some behaviors. Um, hopefully you find this useful and we'll continue to add some more.